Hello and welcome to this special episode on Capan and the Meerkat YouTube channel. I am Meerkat. Unfortunately, Capan is unable to be with us today as he's taken Devon to get his hooves man uh, manicured. Today, we have a very special guest amassing a total as of the 15th of March 2019. That's when I did my checks. He's got 2,000 followers on Twitch, over 44,000 Twitch channel views, and over 15,000 video views on YouTube. It is my pleasure to introduce Bantorius, who may I add, has given his time to speak on a very small channel like ours, which I very much do appreciate. Bantorius, how are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic, man. Thanks very much for having me. Not a problem at all. Thank you very much for coming on. Um, so, got some uh, got some questions for you. Uh, Shoot. Okay, excellent. So we start. I'm ready. You ready? <laughs> excellent. How did you? Because. You stream a lot, so how did you get into streaming, and why why did you go down that sort of avenue? Well, I've always been into video games since I was I'm 35 right now, and uh, five years old playing Atari, Nintendo. Got my Nintendo the following. I got Atari at a garage sale, Nintendo for Christmas the following that that same year. Hmm. And, you know, Nintendo, Sega Genesis, PlayStation 64, the GameCube, you name it. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm a gamer. I've been PC gaming since I was 20, 20 years old. Oh, wow. Um, when the MMO, like, when I discovered online gaming, <laughs> and I was like, what? You can actually talk to people in games and party with them? Like, I, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, you know, I met my wife on a game. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, Ragnarok Online, it's called. Um, met her on that. Uh, found out we lived like four hours away, so I asked her on a date. Drove down there. And ten years from you know later, we're here in this house and married and have a kid. So Wow, so like it's basically a good few years before kind of online dating really took off. <laughs> I and, guess. And you met online. That's amazing. Right, yeah. Uh, his, my mom and dad are always making fun of me for playing that game for like seven years at Ragnarok Online. They're like, I'm like, you watch, mom and dad. I'm going to meet my wife on this game. Because <laughs> <laughs> my, theory, my theory was any girl that liked to play this, this game and like liked to do what I did would be a girl to, to have, you know? So it um, turned out to be true. Fair play. I just uh... She plays World of Tanks with me. Really? <laughs> yeah. She's a great artillery expert. That's pretty. That is... <laughs> But cool. yeah, getting to it is the fact is I'm a gamer, and when I was uh, I was going through, I used to be a garbage man, hmm. and then uh, I, that was really physically strenuous, and I I could I could do it. I was really good at it, but ultimately I wanted to get away from the physical aspect of that because I was getting not getting younger, you know. Hmm. So I, I I found a, a sit down desk job to have uh, to be a dispatcher for a trucking company, and it's a little small family owned company and like basically I got in a disagreement with the son of the president and he fired me for like arguing with the son and uh, you know I got home and I'm sitting there watching uh, you know at this time I had a, a, a Nintendo switch and I've been hearing off and on about Fortnite I started playing Fortnite in September of 2018 and it was like a year you know already before it was out but I was hearing I was like I'm never going to play a game where you have to shoot and build at the same time. Like, I don't want to concentrate on building while I'm shooting. That's stupid. Who wants to do that? I just want to shoot. And so I, I, it was free on Nintendo Switch. There you go for Epic Games for having their marketing and freeing it out and, like, giving it to every platform. I tried it out and was like, you know, and, and I was getting into fights. And I was like, man, if I could just play this on my pc I'd, i would have won that fight and like so I, I switched over to pc and i started watching cypher pk um on twitch and he was a uh basically one of the only reasons why i started watching him is because he's the only streamer i found that didn't swear ah. all the time and i have a two-year-old daughter and i wanted to watch streams in in front of her and and on the tv and then before i got into that I, I was watching like i was playing like sword art online games i was watching like just someone play that uh in the stream in the background and it was in japanese so i couldn't understand him so it was okay if they swore <laughs> <laughs> but like i could not find a streamer that s didn't swear yeah so it's, it's when i got read. fired from the job i was like you know what I could. I'm watching these other streamers like Ninja, Tim the Tat Man, 
uh, Cypher PK, Tifu. And I'm like, I could do this yeah. and, be- and, and better than them. I could do it better than them. I may not be a pro like them, but I could be a professional streamer and, and be more entertaining because you watch some of them and there are they are athletes at the game. Don't get me wrong, but Ooh. some of them are boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't talk at all. They are bland. It's like, okay. I mean, like, look at Dr. Disrespect, if you know who he is. Yeah, He's, yeah. He is very entertaining. That's how you twitch right there. Like, that's an entertaining individual <coughs> right there. Ninja's brand, now Ninja has taken the Twitch by storm. His brand is uh, his, his uh, gameplay mm. is unreal. Yeah. So he yeah. he made and he and he was, he's also been streaming for like eight nine years now, so he he's been like establishing his base and his skill set <laughs> is what brings you to watch him is his amazing skills and it just like you know people are like oh my god look at this kid play this game he's amazing, so you got the you know the streamers that are uh, professionals at the game because they're so good at it and then you got the entertainers. Yeah, and I wanted to. I was like, "Well, I, if if I'm not a pro, I could definitely be entertaining." <laughs> so, well, I thought I could do this. I could do what they're doing, and I could do it better than some of them are. So I was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my chips on the table, and I'm gonna start doing it." Well, well, that's it. So, you mentioned like Ninja and Doctor, like Ninja being good at the game, and then Doctor Disrespect being entertaining. I've right. watched. I've. Uh, you, you may have heard of Shroud. Yes, I haven't yeah. watched a lot of him, but I know he's like good. He's very <laughs> like, he's good, impeccably amazing at the game. But he's right, quite boring. So there, there's a great example. So and people don't watch him for his. Uh, well, some I'm not going to say it. Not all people, but people watch him for his his uh, ability, his proneness, yeah. his aim. Yeah, you know? and exactly. not, no, not knocking Doctor's disrespect. He's an entertainer, but he's also pretty good at the game too. He, yeah, he is actually, to be honest. But he does yeah. put a lot of effort into making yeah. the stream entertaining. Yeah, right. Yeah, the name yeah. <laughs> is <laughs> Doctor Doctor Doctor. <laughs> yeah, you know he's he's very entertaining. And my wife, my wife hates him. He's like, "Why are you watching this idiot?" I'm like, "He's what? What are you talking about?" <laughs> This did, guy is amazing. Did like, you know that's not this... his real hair? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I know she she doesn't get it at all, but I love it. I, he's a great entertainer. I respect the hell out of him. He's six eight. Six for eight. Like, yes. Jesus. I know. I'm like, how does his table must be like super high off the ground? <laughs> he must have a custom made chair. Yeah. Custom made yeah. table. <laughs> Like, jeez. Blimey. But, yeah, I mean, like I say, I've always thought there was two. I, like, somebody was um, asking me there, this really, really good. In the Twitch community I used to be in and I got out, uh, This the one of the, le- the the owners was a Fortnite streamer, and he never had a face cam or nothing, but he was really good at the game, really good. Now, and he, like, in the background, he was always, he, he applied for partner and he got denied. I'm like, dude, uh, it's because you play Fortnite and you're not that you're not different than anybody else that's streaming it right now. Okay, you have the same. Twitch looks for like, you know, uniqueness and streamers yeah. and stuff. And he, he he was asking about stretch res and some of these streamers playing stretch res. I'm like, well, you gotta just ask yourself one question, dude. Um, are you an entertainer? Like, are you a professional streamer that plays Fortnite, or are you a professional Fortnite player that streams? Yeah. And like. He's like, so if you're a professional Fortnite player that streams, leave it on stretch res because the people that know that see that you're really a god at this game will still watch you regardless of what your stream looks like. And the, but the people that watch you because you're a professional streamer, then leave it on regular resolution because the stretch res looks horrible and you're there for your you know the content. Yeah. So there's this, there's definitely different streamers out there and like you like you said you watch Shroud and he's a god at games but he's boring i haven't watched him so i don't know but if you say he's boring i'll take your word for it uh, I, I i do find him boring i need to be hooked you know it's right like a good movie you, you you won't sit and sit down for two hours and watch it <laughs> and it's the struggle because sometimes i feel like i'm boring like I, I try to like keep it like if i find myself like not talking i'll 
think of something like uh, uh, pancakes. Uh, do you like pancakes? <laughs> you know, like, like, well, <laughs> I'll try to think, think of something to say, like to get like keep it not boring. You know, and some it's hard. It's not easy. Some people just can't do it. No, and one thing I one thing I noticed um, when I when I've watched you is, say for example, when you're playing Fortnite, you you will actively try and engage with the person you're playing with. Oh which, yeah, that's which, why I hate it when I get somebody that doesn't have a mic, uh, because it, because then I have to entertain without somebody, and then it makes my job harder. Well, you were you were playing with this guy, and he started. He just he just wouldn't shut up, <laughs> and you were like, right now you're screaming out mute, <laughs> like I can't right. deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Diarrhea of the mouth is okay in certain circumstances, but not when I'm trying to concentrate and like you know. See, I'm I'm a streamer and I'm an entertainer, but I'm also really competitive. I want to win the match. I just don't want to throw it away. So I'm like, dude, dude, just just calm down, eight year old kid. Stop <laughs> talking for two seconds so I can hit this snipe. Boom, dead. Oh, great. <laughs> Thanks. And then the kid's like, oh, you almost got, you almost got it. Oh, I'm like, <sighs> just just chill out, man. Chill out. I know. Just calm right. down. We got this. <laughs> All right, so. To anybody, uh, to anybody out, the, out, out there that wants to potentially stream, what sort of uh, what sort of advice would you give? Any kind of do's and don'ts. I mean, I think we've, to be honest, we kind of covered that. I would really, say about being look, entertaining and stuff. Well, look at what the pros are doing. It's not enough to just have uh, a game that you're playing and stream it. I mean, granted, that is another type of streaming, and that's how some people I think may have gotten popular. Is they're just streaming for a really long time and they just they just decide to stream one day and they click it on and like just having fun with it but there's also the people let's get real the people that wanted to make a living off playing video games like us okay that's what their mind was that's their mindset was at that if anybody tells you different they're lying Hmm. they're like their mindset was i want to stream and make money off of it and uh play video games you know and so you gotta get in you got to think what you want to do with the streaming. Do you want to just stream for the hell of it and you don't really care if you get popular or whatever? You're just like streaming your stuff and you know interacting with people? That's fine. Or are you in it to for the long haul? Are you in it to get thousands of viewers? Are you in it to get partner? Are you in it to get you know a, a sustainable income? Then you got to think about that. And if you're in if you're in it for the long haul, you need to look at what the professional the top professional streamers Google the most like some people say don't start streaming the most popular game it's oversaturated that's BS oh yeah that's yeah. total yeah. BS that's total BS don't listen to that I started streaming Fortnite for a reason because I had access to a huge audience yeah so you look at what the the professionals are doing you know like what what's their layout how do they run their stream what are they doing and then think about how you can make that better you know, don't copy them, but like they, so they have a face cam. So, okay, you need to get a face cam. Do they have an overlay of their face cam? Yep, they have an overlay of their face cam. Get an overlay. You know, do they have, like, doesn't have to be their overlay. It doesn't have to be in their spot. I happen to mimic Cypher PK's uh, camera size and his, and where his camera was positioned at on the screen. Not only because if he was doing it, but I cut, but, but I thought it was a good idea. Like, I was like, all right, I like that camera position. I like the camera angle. It's a good, or not the angle, with the the position on the screen. It's not in cumbersome, you know. So I I just you you look at what all the top streamers are doing because because what happens with athletes? They watch their their they watch the top athletes and they when they're exactly. when you're a five year old kid, ten year old kid, twelve year old, you're watching the best and you're mimicking them in the backyard, you know. Well, yeah, so you like watch fo- like aspiring football players. They'll go right. and try and do what Messi or Ronaldo are doing. Yeah. Sorry, so you do the players. same thing with Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> soccer, you sorry. do the same thing with Twitch. You take what they're doing and you make it your own. Mm. And then you like in my case, I was like, well, I could do it better. <laughs> so I I made my own overlays. I made my own transition screens. I got the transition screen idea from watching Doctor Disrespect. Yeah, yeah. You know, um the the overlays I just made up I wanted something industrial, like cause like grungy you know yeah. looking and the 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 red the black and orange matches my 
icon. So I'm, you know, I stuck with a theme, a color theme. You want a mascot, you know, I mean, do what the best, see what the best are doing and build your stream around what your own style is. And the don'ts are, don't be a jerk. (laughs) (laughs) Don't, don't be boring. Uh, don't, uh, one other thing is, is I'll see people on Twitter go face reveal at 200 followers. I'm like, why are you waiting to 200 followers to do a face reveal? You should have had a camera at the start. It's a proven fact that people click on people's stream that have a face cam over ones that don't. It's people like to see the person that's streaming. It's, yeah. I mean, do do all the top, do none of the top streamers have face cams? Of course they all have face cams. Yeah. So, and, and, uh, don't wait to improve your stream. Like, don't be like, well, I don't know. I'll do a face reveal at 200 followers and, and, you know, no. Get the camera, get the overlays. I would say get a professional setup. Make sure it's professional. Hmm. Like, don't, don't half, I don't, I don't want to swear. Half, <laughs> I don't know any other word than half assing it. You know, just That's don't fine. half. Yeah. We can, we don't can handle have, that. <laughs> don't don't half ass your stream. If you're looking to go pro professional streamer, don't half ass it. Like be professional about it. Do your research. If you in a lot of my stuff, I I know Photoshop already. Oh wow. Okay. I I, di- I didn't even go. I I know Adobe. Uh, um, what's it called? After Effects is what I use to make my intro or the uh the scene transition. Yeah. I did all my graphics are from photoshopping. I just, well, I used to play World of Warcraft with my wife, and they, in World of Warcraft, you used to be able to make your own like screen graphics to put, move your your hotkeys around and stuff. Oh, right. And my wife helped me with Photoshop, and I just dabbled around with it myself, and I learned it myself. And so I, you know, made all. So it, it helps to have some kind of background in in that kind of, and you know, I would say as a professional streamer, no Photoshop, get it, mess around with it. Play with it, YouTube. If you don't know something, if you don't know how to do something, Google it. Oh yeah. YouTube. You know, YouTube, Google, your friends. And uh get a good overlay, make it yourself, be original. And uh I watched a podcast, well not a podcast, a uh it was a Twitch guy stream, and it kinda of did like a a PowerPoint presentation on streamers, like like how you could like how you could get big on streaming and and he was absolutely 100 percent right there's only three things you need to if to, to to consider to become a like a big streamer and grow is one was uh do you have are you a pro at what you're doing like is your game play pro right mm. are you and number two is are you unique you know is there something is nobody else doing what you're doing on twitch right now and three was like you better be damn good into entertaining. Like those are the three things of growth. That's the only way you're gonna grow, is those three things. And yeah. for me, I think I got half the pro down. I'm pretty good at Fortnite. I'm not a pro. Two is I'm definitely doing something unique. I always bring my Twitch stream into the games of the parties I'm in. I don't like just ignore the fact that I'm on Twitch. I never understood that. Like. I'm I'm playing Fortnite, a game that millions of people play, and I can do squads. That's how I got 800 followers in my first two months. I just queued up for random squads, and I told everybody in my squad I was alive on Twitch. And people would come in to my Twitch channel and be like, "Hey, I just played a squad with you," and they'd follow and they'd watch me. Yeah, see that, and uh, yeah, I, I I noticed that, and I I do think that's a good way of. I mean, it's, I, I'd be a fool not to take advantage of the millions of people playing this game. Yeah, yeah 100%. You know, like, get get your name out there. Say, hey, guys, I'm live on Twitch. Come watch me. There's three people, every squad that you can get in contact with and verbally talk to them and say, hey, I'm live, guys. Come watch me. You know, <laughs> and, and I never got these people that stream, and they don't say they're streaming at all to anybody in the party. They're losing out on potential viewers, and, you know, it's like, come on. What do you think? Open your mouth and say you're live. <laughs> plus, plus, it's kind of a good warning as well because maybe the the person you're playing with steps up their game too. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> but then you have the opposite effect of that is is people that uh, troll immediately when yeah. they hear that, yeah, which yeah, I've really. gotten plenty, plenty of people that um, uh, have you know they see they hear that and they immediately start saying words that they shouldn't be saying. 
yes. on uh, live streams. Um, but yeah, so take it serious. Uh, do your research. Mm. Be a professional about it. Don't be a slob. Mm. Um, do you think of course, sticking, those are my advice. Do you think sticking to a schedule like you do yourself? Oh, so absolutely. That's another thing. Thank you for mentioning that. It's absolutely um, helps. I mean, eat Twitch themselves says that. Right. Is you like if you they say stick to a schedule. If you want to be a partner and like don't be like mm, I'm maybe going to stream Tuesday. I don't know. No, you better know. If you're again only if you're looking to become a professional streamer and like to Twitch partner and take it farther than just casually streaming. Yeah. But definitely a schedule is 100% to me uh, a goal. Like yeah, 6 in the morning to 12 p.m. that's when I stream. Every day, Monday through Friday. It used to be Monday through Saturday, but then the wife was like, "Hey, you need to stop Give doing it six time. days a week, right? <laughs> now, if I could, I'd do it for 12 hours every, well, maybe, you know, actually, after doing an eight-hour stream on Saturday, I was like, I'm kind of glad I only do six hours. But then sometimes on some days, the six hours seems to go by so fast. I'm like, man, I wish I could, I was streaming for a little longer. Yeah. But I do have the option to extend it past 12, but usually I don't. Yeah. But yes, schedule is very important. Uh, stick to it. I don't think I've ever missed a single day of streaming. Uh, since September when I started, September 24th. Wow. That is dedication. Yep. I mean, I want it. I want it. If you want it bad enough, yeah, you know, I want, true. I want to be the, I got, I got people every day, like just to, uh, yesterday and today people are on Twitter, like they, they, they PM me and they're like, Hey dude, I love your content. Just hang in there. You're going to, you're going to get big someday, dude. I love your show. Thank you. Like, you're awesome. I'm like, wow, really? That's nice to like, hear that, isn't it? It is, but sometimes it doesn't. Like sometimes I question it. I was like, "Really? You know, like, am I really like I? I believe I am, but it's like, like when I guess you guys be patient and keep grinding and bide your time, and then it's gonna happen. That's what I believe. No, fair play. So, um, so I, no I noticed that you had some uh, computer troubles. So you bought some new, you bought a new processor and a new uh, graphics card. Is that right? Yeah, well, it wasn't necessarily troubles. It's just me wanting to make my stream and uh, as as uh, make it better. That's good. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I just uh, I had an i five processor, sixty six hundred K, and a, and a GTX nine sixty uh, process or graphic card, and you know, I could stream and I have streamed on it uh, since September, and it was. You know, some people are like, your stream is so crisp and nice. And I was like, it's it's not. It's not as good as I want it to be. Mm -hmm. I want it to be like Ninja Stream or Cypher Stream. I want it to look good. Yeah. And I want to be able to play Fortnite without stuttering and graphics on high or whatever. So and uh, I really didn't uh, understand how much I was holding myself back until I got that processor. I've been playing on it since Saturday, and it's amazing. <sighs> It's such a gigantic improvement on my stream. As well, the graphics card I got in the processor, the stream, the 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 performance. It's like um, I almost it almost brought me to tears, honestly, <laughs> as a gamer. And that yeah, sounds yeah. weird, but it's like this is what the pros play on, and I understand now why. Well, that's, it that's amazing. That, that you know, you know, you're saying about it nearly brought you to, to tears. That just shows your passion what you're doing oh i love it i love gaming i love pc gaming in general it's amazing the 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 the, the atmosphere the competition the you know the gameplay the gra I, all of it like one of the things i loved about playing world of warcraft was uh uh back in the day was the the story hmm. uh of the game and so i like games with good story yeah and i, and I like it with good you know, graphics and gameplay, all the above. Fortnite has both, so that's pretty cool. I, I actually enjoy Fortnite story. So, so what's your current your current setup then? What do you, you know, any accessories that you use? You know, what's, um, what have you got inside your, the shell? You yeah, well, there's the i7 8700K processor with the Asus Prime Z370A motherboard. Uh, four sticks of Batrix, I think, Beatrix RAM sticks, I forget what the brand it is uh, 16 megabyte and then I got the uh, uh, Asus ROG Strix RTX 
2060 graphics card Ooh. with a SD solid state drive and a regular hard drive for videos and photos and stuff that I use. And I have a Asus uh, 144 hertz gaming monitor. Um, and I have a my old monitor that I'm now using as my second monitor is my Acer 27 inch gaming monitor. And I th- think oh and my lyx pro microphone which everybody tells me sounds like i'm a a, i'm god or something they're like it does (laughs) every time i get into a game they're like holy cow your mic is amazing yeah to be fair i mean i've got you in i've got you on headphones right now and it just it's so crisp (laughs) i i i did my research i found this mic for 45 bucks on amazon and i i did my research on like i was always wondering why people like all these pros were kept using these condenser mics because I was like, I want what kind of mic are they using? And they're always using condenser mics and yeah. they're talking up to the soundboard and everything. And then I researched condenser mics and I come to find out that they're used for music. And yeah. I'm like, why do they keep using why are they all using mics for music? And when they're talking all the time. They're not playing music, they're talking. So I found out that vocal dynamic mics are used for talking. So I researched, and, and you don't need a condenser mic for, or condenser. You don't need a soundboard for them. And this one is literally a USB microphone. I plug it into the USB cable into the back of my computer, not into a mixer, and it sounds this good, just like that. That's... And I mainly, it's mainly a reason because I have a two-year-old daughter, and I have a TV up here in the computer room, and I, I knew there might be some noise in the. So vocal dynamic mics only pick up noise from the front and directly in front of them. You have to be like two or three inches away from the mic for it to pick you up. Um, and uh, that's why I, I mainly want it to drown out the back so they wouldn't pick up background noise And versus the condenser mic, would, which would pick up everything in this whole room. Like, that's why you hear like Ninja's key clicks and his mouse clicks and like other streamers, you may hear their typing and stuff mm. because their condenser mic is literally picking up everything in their room. Yeah, so so I, I I use a I use a blue snowball, um, snowball. Yeah, yeah. and luckily luckily I, li- I I live alone, so there's there's no not much kind of background there you noise. Go. But, do you have um, a fish tank? Say again. You that, do you have a fish tank? No. You yeah. might have the fish go bloop bloop bloop. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think I think with condensed mics, it helps to be in a bigger area as well, so there's less sound bouncing around. Ah, uh, probably. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, like literally, uh, if you watch Tim the Tap Man, his mic is like two feet away from his face, like it's off almost the screen, and like all of a sudden he leans into it and he starts talking like really close to it, and I was like, "Yes, Tim, that's what your voice is supposed to sound like. Get closer to it." <laughs> and he like leans back and he's like, "Hey guys, hey, like <laughs> Tim, get closer to your mic." <laughs> Like, I can't stand it. Now, after I research it, I can't stand seeing that. It's like, come on, use your mic right. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to I'm gonna ask you three questions. Uh-oh. Quick fire questions. <laughs> okay. And one of the questions, because I've noticed that you used to play this game, but you mm-hmm. stopped. And I'm <laughs> concerned because <laughs> I think Is it's it? an amazing game. <laughs> Is it Apex? Whoa, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Questions first. <laughs> okay, um, sorry. No, no. So, so, okay. So, question one. Again, answer whatever comes to the top of your head. Why have you stopped playing Apex? Crashes. Okay. How can Respawn improve Apex? Stop the crashes. <laughs> I knew that. I knew that was going to be the answer. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the new Fortnite season? Awesome. You like it? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Excellent, excellent. Little little bummed about the planes not being in it. They're taking the planes out? Yep. Ah. I was just like, I loved that. Season 7, introduced the planes, these planes. I loved dogfights. I loved smashing through people's builds and watching them go flying <laughs> off the map and dying. It was hilarious. That was one of the ones. I have a video on YouTube. It's best pilot in Fortnite. It's me, like, getting eight kills with that plane. It's hilarious. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I loved that plane. <laughs> All right. So the final quick fire question. What is your all time favorite game? Chrono Trigger. Okay. So that am I right in saying this was on I think the I, I think I I think I voice cracked. <clears throat> you did. Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger. <laughs> Hang on. I am a man. One second. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> 
Chrono Trigger. <laughs> so that's uh, made by Square Enix. Yeah. On at the, the at the time, I think it was Square Soft. Yes. But now it's Square Enix. Yeah. 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 Um, what? What? So I what, think it came out when I was in fifth grade. So it was released in 1995, according to Wikipedia, which is probably uh, a yeah. lie because it's Wikipedia. No. <laughs> that sounds right. I guess I was in uh, fifth grade when it was out. Okay. So. What, so I probably would have been 11 or 10 or something like that, yeah. So what made that your... Why is that your all-time favorite game? Uh, you know, great memories, I guess. And it's just a solid game all around. Like, um, this, this, the soundtrack is amazing. The gameplay is... Well, okay. A little background. I love Dragon Ball Z uh-huh. and Dragon Ball Super and Dragon Ball. Yeah. I've just been a fan of it i have a wall scroll on next to my if you see my webcam you'll see a wall scroll of goku super saiyan on my wall um the same guy that made dragon ball z and art and all that made chrono trigger oh. um yeah it's, uh his the the story in that game was amazing it had all kinds of different endings the music was amazing I played it with my dad, and um, he like. I, I'm this is a type of gamer I was when I was growing up, and like still am. But we have headphones on now. My dad had these giant Pioneer speakers with like 15 inch subwoofers on them, and like this Pioneer stereo system, like something you see in a in a in a nightclub. That was our living room sound system. And we would hook it up to the Nintendo or the SNES and blast Chrono Trigger so loud the neighbors could hear it. And it would like vibrate the walls. And we'd play like the last boss music. And it was so epic. It was just like the music in that game and like fighting different bosses like Magnus and like Robot. Like all the, all the, the people who know what I'm talking about, Chrono Trigger will know what I'm talking about. Mm. And then, like, I took that aspect of Chrono Trigger, like, the sound, playing games, like, blasting, like, if you're in a movie theater playing this game. And I, like, played Final Fantasy VII like that, like, the last boss, the Sephiroth, like, one-winged angel song, blasting it, like, vibrating your whole house. I mean, that's the way to play a game, <laughs> okay? Yeah. So, I guess just the gameplay in general and the experience that I had playing that game growing up, I guess, just made it my, like, all-time favorite game, along with, like runner-ups like metroid prime and you know final fantasy 7 and secret of mana you know all those a lot of square games actually yeah, square did a really say. good job <laughs> this is a reason because they did a really good job I mean, was, most of the best games out there are square enix games they got a legendary teams behind their games yeah no for sure so that's... And it's sad about Apex, by the way. Ah, <laughs> I know it was yeah. quick fire questions, but no, no, I no, loved please, Apex. Please. I loved Apex. I, I I was playing it. Yeah. And uh it kept cra- you know, I I got the nine the nine sixty GTX and mm-hmm. I got my new graphics card in it and I thought that I saw the crashes. Nope. So there was um so to to answer that, I, I did see something on that. It's something to do with the streaming budget needs to be turned down. Yeah, I had it at zero. You had it at zero, and it still crashed. Yeah. Oh, trust me. I, trust me. I yeah. tried numerous, like eight, nine, ten different fixes to try to get it to not crash. And some days, like one day, it, would, it only crashed on me once. Yeah. And I wouldn't touch a thing. And the next day, it would crash six times. Yeah. It, yeah. Did you find that it always happened? Like you'd get quite far into a round, and oh, it, it was random. Oh really? Sometimes, oh. It, sometimes it'd be like uh, right as we're dropping, oh. and then sometimes it'd be like end of the game, we're about to win, and I crash. <laughs> That's the worst one, though, isn't it? When you get like, oh yeah twenty minutes into the game and you're about and to the, win, the, and boom. The thing I can't understand is is how this game, this great game, has like millions of people playing it, and it still crashes on like half of them. And how this game is still cra- like it's been out a while now. How is this not fixed? Like how they must be making tons of millions of dollars off this game, 
throw 20 people at this problem and get this fixed so we could get back to playing Apex without it crashing. I just don't understand. This drives me up the wall <laughs> how this issue with this company can still exist and it's preventing people like I mean if you, it's affecting them greatly if you look at the Twitch numbers yeah. Twitch has always been a driving force of how well you could tell if a game's doing or not yeah. is how many people are watching it and Fortnite is way ahead of it now it was Apex now it's Fortnite like 200 something thousand people watching and Apex like 50,000 oh really and there's a reason for that oh yeah there's a reason for that because people like me have gotten fed up with the crashing and moved back to Fortnite and uh also, you can make money off of Fortnite, support a creator code. Yes. Apex doesn't have that, you know? So there's another incentive for me to play Fortnite. Not only did I get a system upgrade, and it helped me with my gameplay, and uh, greatly, like, upgrades can help with your gameplay. So I'm way happier with Fortnite right now. And I can make money off the s support a creator code. And it's a stable game, except it had crashed on me a couple days ago, which was really weird. Fortnite has never crashed on me. Um... But yeah, Apex, fix your crap so more people can play it. I just cannot believe this drives me up the wall that this is not fixed yet. All right. So you, you said about uh you said about a sports a supporter create creator code. Yeah. So this is the section where you have one minute to plug anything you want to plug. <laughs> well uh the you could find my Twitch page on uh, twitch.tv slash Pantorius Monday through Friday, six AM to twelve PM eastern time and one of the most interactive twitch streams on twitch there is i mean i'm not boring that's for sure um uh my youtube channel youtube.com slash pantorius daily videos or every other day depends on you know if i don't like the day's stream of like any i usually try to get a good game in and and like win it and then post it on youtube if that may happen daily it may happen every other day who knows? YouTube.com slash Pantorius. Twitter, Twitter.com slash at or at Pantorius underscore is my Twitter handle and also Pantorius underscore on the Instagram. There's also uh, Pantorius.gaming on Facebook, but I don't really look at that. And uh, if you have any business ventures or just any questions for me in general, Pantorius at gmail.com is my business email. And um, that'd be it for me. What about what's your what's your uh... Uh, oh, well, the website, yeah. www.pantorius.com. And also. and also, what's your supporter uh, creator code on Fortnite? Pantorius, yeah. There supporter creator code, Pantorius. Use it, know it, love it. Use it, love it. Refresh every <laughs> two weeks, uh, if, if I'm right. Uh, it yeah, resets itself. exactly. <laughs> right. There we go. All right, well, <laughs> Pantorius, I would just like to thank you again for, for coming on, on our channel. No problem, dude. I really yeah, enjoyed it, you. and I'd love to be on it again sometime. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Um, you know where to find me. I do. I, I, do. I do know where to find you. Yeah. <laughs> Either email or Twitter me. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, is there anything else you want to you, you want to say before we uh, wrap up? Uh, well, it was a pleasure to meet you and be on your show, and I hope everybody. Uh, learned something and uh, had fun and entertained themselves with the show and uh, I wish you guys the best of luck and hope to hear from you again Thank you. and uh, to everybody else that's listening uh, have fun streaming and get out there and game <laughs> absolutely um, well thank you very much and everybody we will see you soon bye thank you <laughs>